Turning to Second Chronicles, uh, chapter 20, this morning, and we're looking at Jehoshaphat. He was one of the kings of Israel. There was many good kings and many bad kings, uh, but this was one of the good kings that followed uh, God in those days. Uh, I would love to have time to read this entire chapter, but I think for the sake of time, I'm, I'm just going to try and skip a bit, but I'll encourage you whenever you go home to read the whole chapter. It is a wonderful chapter uh, of, of uh, salvation, so it is, and, and blessing indeed how God has helped Jehoshaphat in this battle. The, uh, we'll start off in verse uh, 1, and it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites came up against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea uh, on this side of uh, Syria, and behold, they are in Hastaramar, Hastaramar, which is in Gedi. These big words don't work well with my tongue, so excuse me. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. The next lot of verses from 5 through to 13 is Jehoshaphat's prayer unto God for the country. But we'll just come on to the end of it at verse 12. This is just at the end of, of Jehoshaphat's prayer. O our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their children, with their little ones, their wives, and their children. We'll move on down to verse, uh, to verse 21. And when, and when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord. This is whenever they have went out into the battle field. And uh, this is them at, at, at the beginning of the battle. And when he had appointed singers with the people, he, he appointed singers unto the Lord that they should praise the beauty of a, praise in the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army, and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. And they began to sing and to praise the Lord, and the Lord set ambushes against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come up against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Amma and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, every one helped to destroy another. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked on to the multitude, and behold, they were dead, bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. Moving on down to verse 27. And they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem and Jehoshaphat in the forefront of them to go again to Jerusalem with joy. For the Lord had made them to rejoice over their enemies. And they came to Jerusalem with uh, psalmistries and harps and trumpets unto the house of the Lord. And the fear of God was in all the kingdoms of those countries when they had heard that the Lord fought against the enemies of Israel. So the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet, for God gave him rest round about. And Jehoshaphat reigned over Judah. He was thirty and five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty-five years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was as Beu, and daughter of Sila. And he walked in the way of Asa, his father, and departed not from 
and departed not from it, doing that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Just down to verse 35 to the end. And after this did Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, join himself with Ahaz, the king of Israel, who did very wickedly. And he joined himself uh, with him to make ships to go to Tarish, Tarnish, uh, and they made ships in Ezon Geber. Uh, then Eliezer, the son of Dodavan uh, of Mauritius, prophesied against Jehoshaphat, saying, Because thou hast joined thyself with Ahaz, the Lord hath broken thy works, and the ships were broken, that they were not able to go to tarnish. Facing uninvited battles uh, is the title of our message this morning. What do you do whenever you're faced with a battle not of your own making? The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12 that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers and against the rulers in the dark, uh, darkness of this world and, uh, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. As believers, we're facing battles, spiritual battles, every day. But you know, then comes along uninvited battles. Maybe battles like financial battles, maybe battles with friends or family, battles with short or long-term illnesses, battles with old age, maybe battles with the loss of a partner, battles with drink or drugs, battles with unwanted pregnancies, battles with new jobs or going to college. The list could go on, and I'm sure you all have been, been faced with many battles within our own lives that have been uninvited. So what do we do when we're faced with these battles not of our own making? How do we react? Do we get grumpy and frustrated with those around us? Maybe we go and talk to friends or pastors, doctors, psychiatrists, politicians. I'm not against this. It, it could help. Maybe we shut ourselves away and bury our heads in the sand, as it were. We all react differently to the battles that we face in life. This morning, we're going to have a look uh, in the old book of Chronicles, in the Old Testament book of Chronicles. We find that Je Jehoshaphat, the king of Israel, he got word from a friend that there were three nations coming up against him to fight against them. And the odds weren't too good because it was three nations coming against this one nation of Israel. This was an uninvited battle. And let's see what Jehoshaphat done whenever he was faced with this impossible situation. In verse 1 to 4, I've entitled it as the sounds of the battle. Uh, it tells us there that we see these three nations that they're coming up against Jehoshaphat to battle. This was the promised land. This was the land flowing with milk and honey. This was the land that God had given the children of Israel. Do you think God was going to stand by and watch these three nations take it over? I wouldn't think so. But you know, as we look on in verse 2, it tells us that some uh, came and told Jehoshaphat, I believe these were trusted friends that come and told Jehoshaphat about what was happening. And you know something, how important that this touched my heart when I read this. How important it is to have trusted friends around us. When we go to uh, schools or college or maybe start in a new job, you know, let us be looking for those trusted friends. We don't want friends that are gossips. We don't need friends that will be telling wee porkies or spreading rumors about this one or the other. Look for good, faithful friends. More importantly, can we be that trusted friend to someone else? Very important. You know, as we read it on in verse 2, we see that they had already, they had already breached the borders of Judah. They had already in the land. They were in En Gedi, which is in the land of Judah. You know, maybe for us today, that battle, that battle may be approaching us. We may see it approaching, or it may, may be already around us. 
How are we facing it? As we look at the first reaction of Jehoshaphat in verse 3, it says there that Jehoshaphat feared. Well, we couldn't blame him for that because I think even myself have been in the same situation and I would say it's probably three of us all. Our natural reaction is to fear. And fear grips us whenever we're faced with invited battles of life. But you know, we shouldn't be letting our emotions take control of us. I know some people do that, and I'm maybe guilty of it myself. We let our emotions take control. The stomach churns. We can't eat, we can't sleep, we can't pray, we can't concentrate on anything because of the issues ahead. Some people, they'll maybe go mad and get angry and get frustrated. And you know, for, for friends of those people, maybe like that, you know, look out because there, there's nearly always an emotional explosion of, of something coming out because they're so annoyed about what's facing. And James 1, and in verse 19 and 20, it reads, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Reading on in verse 3, Jehoshaphat then set himself to seek the Lord. What a wonderful uh, way to be pointed. He set himself to seek the Lord with all that was going on around him. He didn't turn to man first. He turned to God first. What greater advice could we get whenever facing them uninvited battles to set yourself to seek the Lord? That's the sound of the battle. Verse 4 to 13, uh, we'll see the strategy for the battle. I looked up this word strategy in the dictionary, uh, and this was the meaning that it gave. It means a high-level plan to achieve one or more goals under conditions of uncertainty. Well, Jehoshaphat certainly needed a high-level plan, and here's, here's the plan from verse 4 to 13, prayer. And not only him, the whole land of Judah. I think this is maybe uh, where the statement come from, much prayer, much blessing, little prayer, little blessing. Uh, we read that the people gathered themselves together and asked help of the Lord. I tell you, these, these people knew where to turn to when faced with a major problem. They believed in taking time to pray together. I wonder, do we? I know we pray at home, and it's always good to pray at home, and I'm sure we all, all take time in our own lives to take. If we don't, we should. You know, and, but it's always good to come together to the church prayer meetings and hear others praying and what's important to them. You know, I, I know we can make many excuses. Uh, maybe he pr is thinking he prays too long. Or they're, they're, they're all praying the same prayer. I haven't time to go. Maybe Coronation Street's so. on. Can I encourage you? Come along to the prayer meetings. The prayer meetings are important for our walk with God. They're important for our children's sake and for our grandchildren's sake. They're important for our country's sake. They're important for us as believers reaching out onto others in our daily lives. Don't make excuses. Make a difference. Come along and come together to pray. We see Jehoshaphat standing in verse 5, standing before all the people. And then in verse 6 to 12, we have the prayer of Jehoshaphat to God for help in this situation. I don't want to spend a lot of time in Jehoshaphat's prayer. There's, there's a sermon in there on its own, and it's a lovely prayer uh, and a wonderful prayer. But just to, to sum it all up and pull it all together, uh, in short, you could say that he prayed, O oh God, you are the God of our fathers and the God of heaven, and you rule over the land of the heathens. You are a mighty God and a powerful. I know you've helped us in the past, and I know that you can help us in the future. So please help us now. Please take care of our enemies. 
for we have no power against these three nations that are attacking us. We don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Look at the end of verse 12. I think them's the, the most wonderful words in this, in this whole uh, chapter. We don't know what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. He has admitted, Jehoshaphat has admitted their weakness for the battle ahead. What about us? Can we admit our weakness before God? Are we too proud maybe to admit our weakness in the battle that's facing us or the battle we're in? Are we too proud? You know, in James 4 and verse 6, the end of the verse says, God resisteth the proud, but he giveth grace unto the humble. Notice how Jehoshaphat ends his prayer, but our eyes are on thee. He's totally relying on the power of God to sort out this battle. We need to get our eyes on the Lord. So often, so often in life, our eyes are on everything else around. We make excuses, we complain, and all the rest of it, except on the one who can sort the problem out. It's God that can sort our problem. I read this, this wee thing here. It said that circumstances are like mattresses. If we're on top, we can rest easy. But if we're underneath, we might suffocate. And that's just it in a nutshell. You know, if we keep our eyes on the Lord, I believe that we can stay on top of our circumstances. Now, I think that's some strategy for battle, to come to the Lord in prayer and lay all before him. In verse, verses 14 to 17, we see the solution for the battle. In verse 14, we see the Spirit of God falling upon Jezeel, the priest. You know, it, it seemed to be in the Old Testament that the Spirit of God fell upon people. We read this in different times. In Numbers 24 and 2, we read about uh, Balaam lifted up his eyes, and he saw Israel abiding in his tents according to the tribes, and the Spirit of God came upon him. Also in Judges uh, 6 and 34, but the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon, and he blew a trumpet, and Ebenezer was gathered after him. Now, we can see in the Old Testament that is how it was that the Spirit of God fell upon him. But I believe when we come in to the New Testament, and for us, that that same Spirit lives within us. From the moment that we trust in Jesus and we ask him into our hearts and we believe believing in him, I believe that the Spirit enters and we are born of God and it never leaves us until we reach the glory. In John 14, verse 16 and 17, uh, it tells there, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that ye may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but, he, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. This same Holy Spirit is there to help and guide in the path of our lives from day to day. Romans 8 uh, and verse 26 and 7. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Wonderful verses, how in those times of battle that the Spirit of God is, is making intercession for us. The Spirit also guides us by his power. This verse was actually prayed in the prayer meeting this morning, and it was comforting to know and to hear it being prayed. Zechariah 4 and verse 6, not by might, nor by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. The Spirit dwells within each one of us, and we're led by him. When we don't know what to do, our eyes should be fixed on him and depending upon his Spirit. In verse 15, Jezeel said, Listen, everyone, and he especially listens out, and thou, O king, thus saith the Lord, to do, 
This saith the Lord to you, do not fear or be dismayed because of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Here's a fine way of overcoming life's battles. Trust fully in God. We can relax in our faith if we're trusting fully in God. To do this, I believe, we need to be walking close with our God. There's so many Christians, and maybe myself included, there's so many Christians today, and you know, they're totally worn out because they're trying to fight God's battles. Leave it to God. He knows what he's doing. How many times have we heard it said, and I've said it myself as well, so I can't, I can't say anything. Lord, I know I've really let you down. Um, you know, we feel sorry about letting the Lord down, but I believe God replies, no, you didn't let me down because you were never holding me up. The truth is, we don't hold God up. God holds us up. And he helps those who can't help themselves in those times of difficulty. Have we spent a lot of time running around trying to win the battle? Uh, notice what God said to Jehoshaphat. He said in verse 17, Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. That's just a mighty, mighty verse. Stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Um, what a truth is in that verse. Don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. Tomorrow go out and fight the battle. God I'll be with you. Leave it to the Lord uh, and, and he will uh, bring everything to pass. That's the solution for the battle. Uh, we're getting on rightly, although time's gone on. Verse 18, we see here that they were soulful for the battle. And I think this is a lovely wee part, verse 18 and 19. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshipping the Lord. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and the children of the Korites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. Praising and worshipping God was the theme for the remainder of that day. Jehoshaphat and the people had a mighty strong faith in God. Notice the way that they worshipped and sang praises to God for what he was going to do. And remember, this is before the battle even took place, that he was praising God for what he was going to do. A tremendous faith there. Verse 20 to 26, we, we look at the success in battle for the battle. Uh, in verse 20, it, it says, I think this is lovely, they're up early in the morning, to prepare. There's nothing like getting up to prepare uh, for the day ahead. I, I Personally speaking, I love getting up in the mornings. I love the mornings and, and getting up and spending that time alone with God. Uh, there's, there's nothing in the head at all. Uh, you're getting up with a fresh mind and I think it's the best time of the day to come and meet with God. Um, you know, I, I don't know, I'm sure we all have our own times when we come and meet with God, but you know how blessed it is in the morning because that's when you're most, at your, your head's the clearest, you're not after out of work all day and, and all that, uh, you're most clear in the morning. In verse 20, so they rose up early in the morning and made their way to the battleground. Also in verse 20, Jehoshaphat must have felt that some of the people uh, were lacking in their faith. As we, uh, as we see him telling the people to believe in the Lord your God, midway through verse 20, Jehoshaphat stood up and said, Hear me, O Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall ye prosper. Our faith can be weak at times. Uh, whenever, even whenever we know that God is in control, our faith can even be weak. Uh, 
we sometimes waver and we worry, we stress, even when we know we shouldn't. Uh, we should pray to God, I believe, that God will increase our faith. How important it is, I think this is something that, that we lack, and it could save us a lot of stress and worry sometimes if we pray and lean on Him more strongly, and pray indeed that God will increase our faith. Uh, our faith, you know, should be strong in God. I believe, you know, that as, as we live our Christian life, that our faith should grow and get stronger as we go on. Uh, if, if you feel your faith hasn't got stronger since you were saved, you're doing something wrong. And I would encourage you to pray to God about that and indeed ask Him to strengthen you in your faith. Oh, for a faith that will not shrink, though pressed by every foe, that will not tremble in the brink of any worth earthly woe. Lovely words there from the hymn writer. In verse 21, we see the singers were appointed to praise God in the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army to say to the Lord, to sing to the Lord, uh, for his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing uh, praise, the Lord, he set ambushes against the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, which were come up against Judah and they were smitten. These three nations that come up against Judah fought against each other. God set about confusion within their minds, within their hearts. And these corrupt nations, they fought against each other. And it says in verse 24 that Judah seen the multitude of dead bodies fallen to the earth and none escaped. Not even one. The whole lot was wiped out. That's hard to believe. But you know, it's in God's Word. It's the inspired Word of God. And that is the way it is. Not one escaped. None of them escaped. You know, I believe God can work in the mind of the ungodly just as well as He can within our hearts to make things uh, work out for His children. We, we look at our land today and we see things going wrong in the houses of Stormont, and we see things going wrong with Brexit and all this. God can make it work out if we trust in Him. In verse 25, we see these nations that come up against Judah. Uh, they were extremely large, and they must have been extremely wealthy. It took three days gathering up the spoil, and it was more than they could carry away. In verse 26, they assembled themselves together and they praised the Lord. Notice that they still had to go to battle. It didn't mean that they didn't have to go there. They still had to go to the battlefield. And you know, like us, even in our own lives, we may have to face the battle. We may have to endure those hardships off the battle. It may not be like Jehoshaphat. The battle might not be removed from us. It might not be as easy as just singing in the presence of the enemy. But look at the wealth. It's, not, it's, it's the wealth of learning and leaning on our God that all of this can bring around. Brothers and sisters, it may be in the battlefield where we'll find the richest treasures that we'll ever learn. Verse 27 to 30 is the songs of the battle, rejoicing because the battle was over. All the people were coming home from the battlefield, and they were led by Jehoshaphat, full of the joys of the Lord. They were playing their instruments, and they were rejoicing over the great things that God had done. Never let us forget to come and praise God for the wonderful things, indeed, that He has done for us. Just to finish off, and I'll finish off here now with verse 29 to 30. And the fear of God was in all the kingdoms of those countries when they heard uh, that the Lord fought against the enemies of Israel. So the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet, for his God gave him rest round about. We can see here 
that God give rest. There was no one coming up against Jehoshaphat. I believe you've heard it before. The countries around, the people around, the fear of God was in them. They knew not to come up again this, against this country of Israel. You know, what feels overwhelming today could be one day part of a greater picture of His healing love. In the Bible, it offers godly wisdom for everyone. For the small, everyday problems that we face, the Bible can offer help. And it also helps in the healing for most significant, for the biggest and significant challenges in life. The last few verses, I'll go over these quickly. Uh, the last two or three verses, we read about Jehoshaphat joining up with King Isaiah, whose ways was wicked. Uh, they were wicked and sinful. Please note that although we have learned a lot of lessons from Jehoshaphat, remember he was only a man. He's only a man that started well, went on well, but it didn't end well. I know I don't need to tell you uh, about this, but it does. It's worth hearing. Don't follow man, follow God. One of the most important things in our lives. I trust and pray indeed that the Holy Spirit uh, will rule indeed in all of our lives today and always. I trust this message this morning that the Lord's laid upon my heart may have been some help to you and indeed in, in our path of life uh, as, as we uh, go along. And indeed that those battles that we face from day to day that we can indeed Rejoice, giving God the glory over the victory that he can win when we leave it all with him. Hymn number 650 is our closing hymn.